All right. Let's just go through this. I, I don't have anything necessarily planned, but that's what we talk to each other for. I mean, you did write three points out, and I'm like, well, these are all the same points, technically. Yeah, they, le they, they lead into each other. All right, so uh, this is an in-between episode of Grand Blue um, Radio because a lot has happened in the last 24 hours, um, and a lot will be happening in three days in order for us to uh, be doing another uh, Grand Blue Radio because we've got maintenance coming on the 20th. The maintenance is going to be pretty big. It's going to have 10 eternal transcendences. It's going to have... Um, what, 10 Eternal Transcendences, we're going to cover the two characters that came out, and we're also going to talk about the, the skill update. In the meantime, um, let's talk about Summer Fortune, because... Oh, okay. I mean, we've spent a lot of time talking about this. Like, I, I spent a lot of time talking to you, and we talked back and forth. Like, you were of the mindset, it's like, I'm going to expect nothing, I may get yeah. nothing. Because it's better to, for me to have low expectations on free stuff. Um, I also try, you know, I was very realistic about my chances. I was like, all right, with 14 cards, then it, it's a 100% chance of getting two. There's a chance of getting, there's a, like, maybe a, sh you know, 30 or 40% chance of getting a second four, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so, you know, when I, when I saw that I had a two, and I'm like, oh, okay. And then I went on to just keep writing. Um. But oh, yeah, because because the characters dropped at the same time. Because the characters dropped at the exact same time, so I just kept writing, and then I went to sleep. And so this is this was a pattern, by the way, DJ. I looked. At, there were two times in the last two weeks where I looked away from the account, and I came back, and everything was on fire, because oh, people there were mad. Again? The first time was when I got on a plane and I uh, to Hawaii, and then I landed and. When I looked at my phone, uh, the account was on fire with people being mad at Summer Fortune cards. The exi their very existence. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, like, they they kind of expected, you know, that it would be, that people would be mad. And so the the big point of being mad was like, all right, so most people picked up four uh gold four gold moons. It's like, okay, well, for something that's free, oh, all right. I, I personally picked up two Dama Crystals, because Same. I need those. And then, remember that, like, the the gap between Tiers 4 and Tier 3 is enormous. Like, these are a spark target. They don't give you a spark, that's what Tier 2 is. Tier 2 gives you a spark, which I cashed in earlier today, uh, so, you know, uh, take... Take my opinions in from the perspective of someone who did win tier two. Um, but people were were and still are big mad, like really really angry about this. Like, um, Japanese Twitter was hugely up in arms. Grand Blue En's mentions were like full of arguments back and forth about uh, the nature of free stuff. But you know, expectation setting is so difficult. Like. At the exact same time that they released the prizes, they also gave everybody 10,000 crystals. People and forgot that part. People, or they have been so primed up by Grand Blue Fantasy's like increasingly escalating giveaways that they didn't care. Like 10K is like, oh, you know, so this is like, like the thing is that Grand Blue Fantasy has given away something like 50,000 crystals or something like that. This cycle i don't i'm not sure of the exact number but last year it was you know 60 plus 60 000 plus mm -hmm. and yeah the whoo this whole thing was 24 hours of like you know the, there was a trend uh there was a hashtag called grand blue retirement or quitting grand blue ah uh, so that's what that, those last two kanji were yeah intai so, um, retirement or withdrawal or, you know, it was like either withdrawing from competition, retiring, et cetera, et cetera. And, like, people were bringing, like, this was essentially, like, a boiling point for a lot of things that people were um, already mad at. But, ha you know, they were just, I guess, they were staying because of free stuff, which is kind of an unhealthy I, thing. I don't know. 
it's kind of an unhealthy thing in the first place, but you know, there were there were a bunch of points being brought up in Japan about like how Grand Blue Fantasy has had more star legends each year than last, which by the way, 2019 and 2020 had like the same number and 2021 is on track to have the same number, but mm-hmm. people feel like they're being squeezed there. Um people felt like this year has had a lot of like super pushed characters, which in my opinion is just every year. I think that I, I say this a lot where we we did get something to actually challenge those characters and I enjoy that. So we'll see. But yeah. Um, social media and expectations building and then expectations being met were really, really toxic across yeah, both languages I, people are like bring up some old things too and i'm like this thing didn't happen since 2016 but i mean yeah people had old grudges that they were all being dragged up and it's like it all came from essentially this promise here of like so you know people understood tier one point one point one percent people aren't going to get this one however like i said the the, the floor was really bad and th- this experience of clicking through all of these things and seeing no, 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 all over the place. It's it's not a it's not a good experience, right? It's like it's not setting people up for happiness, which is which is something that I will knock side games for, where this was not thought out in such a way to make people happy. Now, the question is, what kind of giveaway does make people happy? Where you can turn it into a little None. bit of a game? Yeah. Because I mean, people... remember last time we had the scratch. Remember when we had the scratchers and everyone got uh, was guaranteed the sunlight stone at the very end, yeah. and it just made the people like, well, if it's not if, it, if everyone got this, it's not feel special. Right. Remember when roulette guaranteed everyone a one hundred at the end, and the people were like, well, if I already got a one hundred, then why am I being punished for getting a one hundred by everybody else getting a one hundred? It's like you're not. You're everybody gets a hundred. Everyone gets a hundred at the very last one. And... No, nothing changed in that in that last roll. Yeah, it's just like the 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 amount of survivor bias in social media is, is part of, it's part of how these social games work, because you know when someone posts like, "Hey, check out these new characters I got!" Like this is so cool. I mean, well, it's it's the nature of the beast there, where it's just like, well. This is why at, uh, earlier today I just posted the uh, screenshots from the RAB video. Real Akiba Boys. Yeah. yeah. What is uh, what was it like? Uh, the song it, it's a song making uh also poking fun at gotcha games, but talking about gotcha games in general. Mm-hmm. And and uh, it's like yeah, I, I say on Twitter it's like I can be a winner, but I'm a loser. You're a loser. We're all losers eventually. Right, and it's like it the 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 social mentality of these games like you see other people being successful people will roll they'll get nothing like there's you know uh, in a in a 10 roll in grand blue fantasy there's about what a 25 percent chance that you'll get an ssr at all in that 10 roll and you know that that chance goes up i think to about 30 some percent during uh, gala but you know when people don't get anything, they won't talk about it as much. And then people will retweet and, and uh, talk about either the most extreme bad luck, because you remember that 300 rolls where someone got only one SSR or something like that? That People remember that. Like that. And then people remember the extreme good luck. And people will post more of the extreme good luck on social media than the bad luck. Correct. Um, and so, you know, you go into Summer Fortune... And you see on social media, it's like, I got a tier one. Like, we got a b- multiple crew members who got multiple tier two wins. And it's like, cool. Yeah. But, you know, it's like, you, you this one was set up for envy and for, like, the, the, the trap of social media in these social games is that you will see people who are winners and then go, I can win myself. Like, it's when you see someone with all of the, like, lights uh on the big jackpot of the slot machine right it's like oh i can win a slot machine too and so you just keep pulling that slot machine and you know that's that goes into gambler's fallacy these lottos you can't draw more there there is the limit of 13 and then it became 14 
and that just felt bad. Like we were talking a lot about how to alleviate the bad feeling that you get when you don't win at these things. And, you know, in, for example, in an RPG, when you don't get the drop that you want, you're just like, all right, see you tomorrow. I'll, I'll try, I'll try to, you know, get this uh, item tomorrow because that is when the reset happens. I will go do something else. And eventually by persistence, I will get this thing. Mm -hmm. in a gotcha game you'll roll again with uh, and you'll say like with through through the power of money or saved resources i will get this thing and you know that's where a lot of gotcha design in these gotcha games differs where it's like some places will have the pity um roll system where you know the more that you roll the more likely it is you get the thing that you want mm -hmm. uh, or there's like a spending ceiling or th sometimes there's nothing and you just accept it, I guess. But you know, there's 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 a release valve for that bad feeling that you got. Um, and for this one, there was none. And so that let people ball it all up, especially since this took place over two weeks. Like people were not happy. One by of... one, getting each one of these scra uh, not scratchers, but these lotto tickets. These lotto tickets. And the thing is that it didn't tell you what the lotto ticket was going to be until the end. Uh, and like I said, this is something that they do with Cinderella Girls, and people don't really complain about it in Cinderella Girls, because by playing the game, you earn more of these tickets. And it doesn't show you every single one that lost. Like, you can get dozens of tickets easily in the Cinderella Girls version of this. Mm -hmm. And then it just tells you, it's like, okay, you want a five, a six, uh, two sevens, and an eight. And you're like, okay, thanks. It just doesn't show you, like, everything that won, unless you really want to look. And, yeah, like, people saying, you want a lottery to be handled better, tell that to reality, I want a million dollars too. Um, this is a lottery that you had, the only way to avoid the lottery was not to log into the game. This was a free lottery, which had its, it has its bonuses, it has its, a lot of, like, negatives to it. Um, jeez. <laughs> so anyway, uh, what was your experience with it, like, just socially? Because mine is very different from anybody else's. I mean, your yours is messed up because you actually run an account. Mine was literally, I just didn't look at Twitter for an entire day at all. Yeah, I slept badly last night, um, and then I was just like... Uh, when I by the time I woke up, so this leads into the last part of this conversation where Psy Games didn't say anything for about a day, which is very common when people get really mad at them. Like this is what happened with Korwa when Korwa released back in 2016, and then they came with so this was their solution to appease the mob and to appease the 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 social mob. Like I'm not actually gonna sugarcoat this. It was just a mob of people like banding together and essentially harassing other people. And yelling at them and just like just spreading bad feelings and they said all right everybody gets a tier three now and they specifically didn't say everybody who didn't get a tier four like didn't get a tier three or better gets a tier three they said everybody gets a tier three correct that was the last second that we got this morning and this is guaranteed to win and every everybody who logs in gets it and people who were mad stayed mad this is this is not like surprise yeah it's it didn't change any of their opinions. What it did we, is we it go just... back to the we go back to the sunlight stone thing of ever, if everyone got this, it's not any different, right? And so this is where I, you know, I, I'm I'm usually very sympathetic to side side games because I've spent a lot of time on social media. I've spent time as a game developer. I know how certain decisions you have no control over or you're just trying your best and it doesn't work out, that kind of thing. Like, side games with these giveaways uh, each year, they're trying to do something different and fun, right? They're trying to do something exciting, different, and fun. And this one, once again, like, there, it was set up in such a way where people just didn't feel good about it, even if they won. Or if they won, they, were, they had a mob that would yell at them. Um, and... In this case, they just decided to say, hey, everybody get your free thing. And then, 
like you, you have better more formulated thoughts on this than I do I think because we were talking about this a little bit and you said you thought the same thing as me like I think this is a really bad idea for them to be doing I really didn't think they should have appeased the mob per se in this case mm -hmm. because it just sets up expectations Cause... bad expectations at bad because it's the same as like if you're a parent and your uh, your child uh, your child's being bad so you appease to them right I mean so in previous times when Psy Games has done something like this, they will apologize and then they will say something like, you know, um, we, so a lot of the time when they do this, they, it is something that they plan, feedback is really bad, and then they say, all right, because of your feedback, the plan has changed and we're doing something different. Um, they did that for things like um, the potential of using gold bricks for something other than the Eternals. They did that for... Uh, when they were changing uh, Unite and Fight boxes and such. Um, and this time, the apology saying, you know, we, we set this up, we did it bad, we made you feel bad, we'll, we just wanted to make it feel fun, we will, we will try very hard to make it keep feeling fun. And I don't know if just this thing may, gave anybody joy. Seemed like an attempt to bring uh, mess over of felt, uh, so they won't likely won't do it again. Uh, yeah, bring I idol master stuff. Like there, are, there are better ways to implement this. You know, there could have been just like ways to get more tickets. There could have been a better floor. Then just mm, I I don't think I don't e know. adding more tickets will actually change a thing really. Yeah, that's true. I think the floor because it doesn't be change it doesn't change it doesn't change the fact that your the losses are the quote unquote losses aren't as high mm -hmm. as the highs are really high, but the yeah the like you said the floor is kind of low. Yeah, and then there was no like medium really, you know, like everything. Yeah, tier three was literally literally a a spark target. Yeah, and then four was just like. Four was useful things, but, you know, in previous Scratchers, you get one of those things each day, even if it's not that great. And so, you know, this was this was poorly implemented, but also poorly... Uh, like, the, I don't like the way that people uh, received it either. I, I don't like that mob, like, I'm burning everything down mentality. It's once again, something that uh, social media encourages, like... I don't know if you were ever around during this. I tell I tell the story of these things um, back before social media, when it was just like forums and two chan and stuff like that. Like, oh, I definitely was not around during that time. I didn't have a computer during that time. Yeah, um, like Japanese fandom, they still had these bad actors, and they would still get like internet fame in a small way for doing horrible things. Like, um, the one that I remember, it was either it was either one of the Dokuses or Kakuses, Elf Games. And they found out that one of the characters had had a previous boyfriend before the story. And people, like, broke their discs in half and mailed it to the company. They, like, set shit on fire. You know, it's it's the equivalent of when your favorite sports player gets uh, either uh, go, leaves in free agency or gets traded or something like that. And people just go and they set their jersey on fire, right? In, in like, what they believe is a form of protest against the, the player. And it's just uh, that reminds me of the, of the thing that happened with like the Kanagi author too. Remember? Yeah, they they harassed her. They harassed her into poor health. Yeah, it was horrible. Yeah, and like this is kind of the thing that this, like that kind of behavior has been amplified in the social media age. But it was already there, and like I've never been a fan of that. I've never been a fan of like finding employees and harassing them. Like, I think I told you this where, um most mobile games don't credit their writers largely because they'll get harassed them. yeah yeah and it sucks because like putting your credits on a game is the point <laughs> like i i was so proud when i saw the cre my name in the credits of a game for the first time and people you know are very proud of their work in these games but they won't say it very publicly unless they're like a higher up figure because they'll get targeted they become targets i feel i the internet still forgot that there are actual people behind the, behind everything and behind screens. It really sucks to be hurt mentally or physically or both. 
Yeah, and you know, I do this in front of like an audience of a couple hundred uh, in face to face, and then I do this in front of a uh, like audience of about sixty thousand, which expands whenever people like start retweeting stuff and such. But you know, the core audience of Grand Blue Yen is a little around sixty thousand people. If you cut off like repeats, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure what the number of, uh, of those people who are real are, but like I've been called a pedophile before for work for working on this fan account. It's like that doesn't feel good. <laughs> It's also 100% untruthful. Like... Like like I said, people behind the screen do, uh, don't treat others as other people. I, I honestly don't believe that there's any easy way to have just fixed everything. Uh, no, on, there's in this not. one. I think this one needed a lot more time in, like, design, but, you know... It it was what it was, and we've talked endlessly about how it could have been better. Uh, well, one of my thoughts is that we still there's no way you can scale up like at all. The, the rewards are way too high. And that's that's another thing, right? Like Fukuhara said this in an interview we had with him, where we were talking about the uh, anniversary, and he's like, "We gave them a new class." We gave a gold brick, we gave a sunlight stone, and then we thought about it and went, maybe this was too much. Like, we wouldn't sometimes think we gave people too much. Yeah, because, then, uh, like I said earlier, you, uh, you set expectations. And the expectations after last year were amazingly high. Like, the thing is that people know uh, in some ways that, like, the stream rewards are kind of set in a way. Like, they'll give people stuff, and then as new stuff comes out each year, they'll give new stuff in that new way, right? Where it's like, where there was Nalbo and the Joy mascot costume, like, looking at KMR and saying, we could, we've earned more prizes, right? And that's a, like, that's a minor thing. That's a, a controlled environment, a little fun thing. And we got Awakening Orbs. People are like, well, you know, it's not like we um, prize these things super highly, but they're useful, and we'll take them. But yeah, um, <sighs> I I think this was poorly handled um, on on a lot of sides, and uh, does it make me less enthusiastic about playing GBF? No, does no, it make me? Changed. Yeah, does it make me less enthusiastic about interacting with people who play GBF? Maybe. Oh, so like every fandom that I'm in. I just ignore the fandom part. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it's like I, I, I didn't have any illusions about GBF fandom being better than any other fandom or anything like that. But you know, it's been two years since we met any GBF fandom in person, um, and the people that I see at conventions, the people I see at Grand Blue Fest and stuff like that, there's just so much joy in those people, right? Yeah, that's true. And like those events are designed to bring joy to people. Like, I joke about the worst thing that happened to me at Grand Blue Fantasy Fest. And I, you know this story. I think you already know about this already. You, you know what I'm going to be saying. It was that freaking Evoker's gotcha machine. How, you mean you hate your six times? Was it, was it six or was it seven? It was, it was like six or seven out of ten. But the thing I, is... Go ahead. Meanwhile, I got... In my ten rolls, I got nine of them. See? But the thing was that that is something that I could have affected. And I did, because I stood around for like 30 minutes walking around going, hey, I got an extra Kaim. Can you, do you have anything to trade? I'll trade you Kaims. <laughs> and that turned into its own story, right? Like it became a social yeah. thing. Um, and there were ways for me to turn this into something else. You know, and the, that, that's like the worst case scenario. Then there was the first year of Grand Blue Fantasy Fest where Henry... Oh, just... with the with the, all, the infinite uh, amount of... Uh, yeah, he just I kept that. turning. He just kept turning the wheel. He's like, why doesn't this stop? How do I just keep getting things? I'm like, Henry, what happened? <laughs> you know, and that's that's the joy. That's the joy of this game. It's like the social experience, the getting through people and uh, just talking to them and just finding common ground in what you enjoy and your degeneracy. Yeah, you're yeah. able to talk to some uh, girls that like Siete, and you just traded them the, or gave them the Siete. Yeah, you know, because I felt asked. guilty. <laughs> because they were like, <laughs> yeah, because they were talking to us in line, and they were like, hey, so 
uh, I'm gonna head straight to the gacha machines because last time the Eternals rubber straps they were uh, they were gone all gone by the time we got there. And I'm like I feel re I feel directly responsible for a lot of this, so I just turned around and just handed. I mean, them. it was only one machine. There's a lot of machines. There, there were a lot of machines, but still, like from that one machine, Henry emptied the machine. <laughs> like, so I still did feel directly responsible for that. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, we have a story about that one at least. Yeah, exactly. Like that's that's the the good thing about all of these is that we like the the best point of a social game is the social experience. And that's what Fuku that's another thing that Fukuhara has said in his uh interviews is that like when this game sh when we finally sunset this game, when this game enters its twilight, um it's he wants the game to not be something that is like mourned, but something that is celebrated by just people who are like, "Hey, remember when this happened? That was a really good story. Like, this was cool. This was cool." I don't know if Psy Games will ever like shutter this game before it releases its infinite other uh, spin-offs and just you know, this is a big franchise. Like, this is look. I'm still amazed Razor Bahama is still going, dude. Yeah, Princess Kinnick got rebooted. They're just like, eh, we're making a new one. But, uh, yeah, like, th this this game is set up in such a way that you're supposed to just have good stories to share. And, yeah, like, there there was just um, a lot of disappointment all the way around in the last two weeks. I think that's just all I wanted to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything you wanted to close out on? Remember, have fun, people. <laughs> like... I think what well, what did uh, Moto call it? One of our crewmates. He called it the chlorophyll interaction therapy. I think it was, aka touch some grass. Oh, I didn't see. I didn't see that comment. I I also muted our channel just in case. Oh yeah, that's that was a good idea. Uh, from oh my search isn't working. But yeah, um, that's pretty much all I had to say. We're gonna so there's maintenance on Thursday, and that's August twentieth, and that'll be um, when a bunch of stuff gets implemented. So we're delaying radio. Is what you're we're saying? We're delaying radio to Friday, and um, we'll talk about things then. So. <laughs> There, there'll be so much to take in and so much info that will still be coming in as people, you know, throw gold moons at gold books to uh, throw into Eternals. That it'll, uh, it'll be important for us to have all the info before we actually talk about it. Because there'll be just a lot. All right. Uh, thanks for joining me. Thanks for just talking through this because I don't yeah, know. No problem. There were a lot of there were a lot of emotions, and most of them involved me going. I need to step away for a while. I need to be more offline. Yeah. I mean, that's why you watch all our anime yesterday, right? Like in Hawaii, I spent so much time trying to be offline because of just how toxic the uh, the interactions had become. I'm just like, I'm gonna. I'm in Hawaii. Like, I I snapped. Your at vacation people. is your vacation. Yeah, I snapped. Yeah, at I, people I saw that your first day. It's like. That was my signal to just be like, all right, I'm stepping away for a little bit. You guys take care of the account for a while. You're, I'm too invested in this right now, and I need to step away, enjoy Hawaii, and then come back with a fresh, uh, fresh head. And I came back, and my head was fresh for a while. And then, and then this. It's like, all yeah, right. And then yesterday happened. Yeah, and then so I stepped away for a while again. Thankfully, not much uh, news happened, but still, like it was, it was important to just say a lot of these things for me at least. Yeah, you already knew that uh, as of a couple of weeks ago, my thoughts uh, on this was like, if I win, that's cool. If I lose, nothing happened. Nothing changed. I didn't change. My life's not any worse. Yeah, a lot of people were arguing. It's like a lot changes if you do win because you get this, you know, this thing. And it's like, you know what it changed for me? What did it change for I, you? I went from two sparks to three sparks. I went from one. Yeah, I went from one spark to two sparks. And I used it. Well, thank you for the follow, B Tetra. But oh, yeah, you streamed that earlier, right? I did stream. Well, I streamed the last parts of it, but yeah. And uh, I mean, it it did give me some joy. It took my mind off of these things, and I just wanted to, you know, 
just blow off some steam, and I'll probably sp be sparking again at the end of the month for uh, for Tabina. She's a pretty good one, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't blame you. All right. So anyway, see you on see you on Friday night, and uh, thanks for thanks for watching, thanks for listening. I hope that you like listen, listen. So we'll we'll see you again. I'll still be here. You'll still be here. Mm hmm. And uh, my my Vicala mascot really just it really it does your mood. say everything. It's your mood. It's, she's my eternal mood about this thing. All right. Remember, remember have fun, guys. Just take it, it easy. And sometimes you know, like the game is not necessarily set up for you to have fun, but to keep you in, uh, keep you in. And at that point, you just sort of have to step back and say, what do I actually enjoy about this game? What is the best part of this game? And come back for that. I watched Shalem's Fate episodes today. Those were fun. I love that. That was that was amazing. I'm going to go back to them because I had to skip the last two in order to actually you, fight against a you raid. Know, uh, you know what gave me uh, some joy uh, uh, in Grand Blue the other day, Tom? What's that? Uh, during United Fight was not United Fight, obviously. Well, instead, watching uh, Osora Subaru uh, go through uh, the Ranger events. Oh, that that does sound like it was cool. I mean, that, that's that's the joy of this game. Like, you just need to remember that. And if you don't remember that, then it's time to step away and think about it, and just re try and figure out what actually does make you happy, so that you can be happy. And if you if you aren't happy, then just you gotta really reevaluate yourself because that's that's the point of mindfulness. If you are unhappy for long enough, then you get used to being unhappy, and you stay there, and you find ways to get. Uh, back to the state where you are unhappy so that you have that like stability in your life and it's like that's that's a really bad cycle don't get in that mm -hmm. cycle get out of that cycle be happy get away from the internet the internet's bad for you it really is i went to hawaii it was good for me <laughs>